today's Red Dane top tip is on managing your silage pit and feeding out the silage. We have done a video before on making silage and obviously if you haven't made it properly uh, you, you, you're going to have a lot of problems when it comes to the stage. So this is a fairly typical Zimbabwean style pit with earth sides um, and which, which is wasteful. You'd rather want to put some uh, plastic lining on the, on the sides so you don't get dirt mixing in there. But what is a big improvement on, on this pit is the fact that uh, we use a high quality silastop plastic. And what that, what that ensures is that the silage right from, right from the top is usable and edible. There's no mold and no losses up at the top here. So, so, that's, so what we've done is we've used this special silage plastic together with a, um, a shape, a very thick shade cloth that goes over and protects that on top. Um, you can use a thinner uh, silage of plastic, but we, we use this rather thicker one because in Africa we tend to have chickens and animals and things and coming and making holes. Any hole, wherever there be a hole, you'll have a huge area of rot and therefore a, hole, a, a lot of loss. So this is very important. Also that when the guys are, uh, as you can see here, they've cut a very straight edge. Um, that's very, very important. If you, if you have a rough edge, there's much more rotting going on because you, you're now exposing the silage to oxygen. So remember, silage is an anaerobic, uh, or insiling is an an anaerobic process. So we need to keep the oxygen up. And yeah, once we've opened it, we're exposing the face. So the less that's exposed by having a straight edge, the better, as, as they've done here. And so what we do, because we have such big pits, is we actually start at the top, go in about two meters, and cut down a section each day. It'll take us about three or four days to get to the bottom, which means there are areas exposed for three to four days. So we then use the same plastic to pull it down and cover and try and keep out at least the sun and some oxygen, uh, which to ensure we don't get secondary fermentation. So here we've got a good example of a, of a problem in a silage pit and why I think uh, I'd prefer to move away from silage pits. Um, here this, this silage was made during the rainy season so there was water coming in from under the pit as well as during the process there might have been a rain shower or two. So that's why we've got standing uh, water or, or actually silage effluent. Any, any silage that's been soaked has actually had a lot of the nutrients soaked out of it. So that is a problem. So how do we manage it? Well, the important thing is to identify where the wet layer is, bag that separately and use that for followers, not for milky cows, providing it doesn't actually have molds and, and rot in it. It's safe enough to use, but it's lost some of its uh, nutrition, uh, its, its nutrient content, and also um, its, what, its uh, dry matter will be much lower. So you need to take that into account and you need to feed out much more. So. Um, here the guys are, are actually using up and bagging this layer separately before they then go back to the top and start bagging the, the good silage from there. Whenever bagging out silage, the, the people that are doing it need to be aware of some basics. So they obviously we train our guys to look for any molds and any dirt and, and try and keep dirt out. Remember any sand in it, I'm sure if you've ever taken a mouthful of something with sand in, you didn't enjoy it, neither do cows. So it's really important that we, we, we separate that so the guys know if they get some dirt in it, they, they separate it and particularly looking out for moles. Another thing that's vital is, is feeling the temperature of the silage. This silage, uh, we used an inoculant and it's, it's actually freezing cold to the touch. Um, whereas in the, in, the, in the upper layers, whereas down here, there we've got a bit too much water, it's actually slightly warm. So that means that it's, it's, it's still going through the ensiling process or it's actually rotting. So you're going to have much higher levels of microtoxins where it's warm. We want cold silage. That's the proof that the ensiling process is finished and that we're actually making silage, not compost. An important factor when feeding out silage is that you only take the silage that you're going to feed within the next, I would say, maximum six hours. Um, we actually start bagging just a couple of hours before feeding time so that we're taking the nice cool silage and feeding that to the cows so that um, I know a lot of people get in the habit of bagging silage early in the morning and then that silage lasts till the following day. The, the, the silage that's left in the bags till the next day or even worse in a heap 
will be exposed to oxygen and if you feel that silage in the morning it's actually warm so uh, it's just a couple of hours before at the at best and check at feeding time and when the, the silage is going in the bunk that it's still cool